Hi, I'm Kevin McCarthy, the Chief Technology Officer for Dover Motion. And in this video, we'll be looking at commercial implementations of the inverse piezoelectric effect, for which we'll shorten to simply piezos, as well as their limitations. And we'll be showing you a technology which is superior across the board. The first piezo technology that we'll examine is called a direct piezo stack. Here's an example. This product has small, thin piezo disks, each disk having a potential cross it of about 100 volts. It has to be made of a number of small parts. If you wanted to get the same effect with a voltage across the entire device, the voltage might be 10,000 volts and people would be electrocuted. So to keep it within a reasonable range of 100 volts or so, there are a very large number, think stack of dimes, of small piezo disks. Now the piezo stack is very good at pushing, but it doesn't pull. So a large spring is put in, compressing and preloading the stack. But the principal limitation here is that it's 85 millimeters long and it has only 60 microns of travel. To put that in contrast, a single human hair is about 100 microns. This is 180 millimeters long, and if you purchased a direct piezo stack of that length, you would get a stroke of about 180 microns, or say, two human hairs. But again, this is inconveniently long, and the stroke of 180 microns is still easily eaten up by a lot of your manufacturing tolerances. So the available stroke is still gonna be really small. Now, when you operate a piezo stack of this type, you can operate it in what's called open loop mode. You simply put a voltage on it and it gets bigger. You take the voltage away or you reverse the voltage polarity and it gets smaller. The problem is that it is not an especially linear effect. So if we plot position X versus voltage, as we increase the voltage, we increase the stroke. But as we now take the voltage away, it does not repeat the same path. This is referred to as hysteresis. And this hysteresis can easily be 15% or more of the total travel. So it's not an especially accurate nano positioner. In addition, piezos operate in an open loop mode are subject to a problem called creep. This is a position versus time graph, and our goal is to make a step move. So we'll be at zero, and then the goal is to suddenly be at, say, 50 micron position further away. The actual motion of the piezo will be like this where it makes the move and then just continues to move or creep. The way that this is solved is by turning the open loop product into a closed loop product. In this case, a position feedback device is added, typically either a strain gauge or a capacitance gauge, and a servo controller is used, and one or 2,000 times a second, it measures where is the end of the piezo and where is it supposed to be and is continuously adjusting the voltage to keep it in the right spot. Well, that does certainly improve it, but it also dramatically increases the cost and the complexity of the system. But the dominant problem in the piezo stack is its length. A very common application of piezos is to move a microscope objective up and down to focus it in an automated microscope. I think you could see that having something this big to do that really doesn't work very well. That brings us to our second category called a lever amplified piezo actuator. It has within it a direct piezo stack, but it's a much smaller one. So the solution has been to employ lever amplification. A lever is used to translate a small motion at the piezo stack to a large motion where the customer payload is placed. Yes, the stroke is increased, but typically to no more than two or 400 microns, still far short of the millimeters that are preferred in a positioning application. 
And in addition, the lever amplification leads to a lower first fundamental resonance. In a direct stack actuator, this is the big long one, if you look at signal versus frequency, the small signal amplitude is flat until you get to a certain point where there's a very high Q resonance at the spring mass resonance, which is the square root of K over M. In a direct stack piezo with a light load, that's usually far enough out to not cause a major problem. But in a lever amplified piezo system, the lower stiffness brings this in a lot lower. So it's difficult to close a really high bandwidth with such a system. In addition, the nature of the leverage is generally a flexor lever. These are prone not only to low stiffness in the direction of motion, but out of plane weakness, which poses a real problem because instruments have vibration sources, they have fans, they have pumps, and we have routinely seen our customers struggle when the flexural guideways and lever amplification leads to a reduction in the stiffness, susceptibility to out-of-plane motions, and lower first fundamental resonance. They are relatively costly products and require some fairly sophisticated electronics. So we can contrast the core technologies at the heart of direct piezo stack actuators and lever amplified piezo actuators with linear motor equivalents. Let's look at what those are. In most piezo actuators, the motor is piezo, the guideways are flexures, and the feedback is either a strain gauge or a cap gauge. All of these technologies are limited stroke technologies. When we do direct drive, we have a linear motor with unlimited travel, cross roller guideways, very stiff, unlimited travel, and a linear encoder, very accurate, very high resolution, and unlimited travel. This is a very pure system. The optical encoder has no contact, the linear motor has no contact, and the rolling motion of the cylinders in the cross roller are extremely stiff and extremely smooth and straight. A very common application is focusing a microscope objective. And as we saw, a direct piezo stack, due to its extremely long length, is simply not going to fit there. It would be going through the sample. The de facto choice in many cases is to use a lever amplified piezo solution. This comes at several costs. One is that the payload capacity is lower. Another is that the stiffness is reduced by the lever ratio. And the other bit is that with the lower stiffness comes a lower first resonance and hence uh, lower bandwidth and poorer move and settle performance. At Dover Motion, we've developed a particular product for the microscope focusing market, which we call the DOF5. The five, because it has five millimeters of stroke. Massively higher, an order of magnitude or more, higher than even a lever amplified piezo, which gives you plenty of opportunity to get the expensive microscope objective up and out of the way when you're loading a sample or unloading a sample, or if there are parts on the sample that stick up. We've done something else in the DOF5, which is really remarkable. It's not immediately obvious, but if you look carefully, you do notice that there's a connector on the side of the DOF5. And what that connector connects to is this circuit board, which lies inside the product, largely out of view. And this circuit board basically implements a complete, very sophisticated 20 kilohertz update servo controller and encoder all on one board. This is the key to high performance. I hope, over the course of this video, that you've gotten a better appreciation of the various commercial implementations of the inverse piezoelectric effect and the significant limitations that they face. The DOF5 with direct drive, cross roller guideways, and linear optical encoder feedback is simply superior across the board.